In this video, we're going to take a look at the different shapes that the cursor takes on in Excel 2019, uh, which is also called Excel 365. So let's start off with the first cursor shape. When you are down here in the actual data area in Excel down in the grid, uh, what you see most of the time is a fat white plus sign, and uh, that's used to select a range of cells. All you got to do is click and drag. Um, this is called a range. Any rectangle in Excel is called a range, and it's denoted by its first cell, which is C2, column C, row 2, and its last cell down here. So upper left to lower right, and this is L18. So that's the range. And even though this one is white, it is still part of the selection. Uh, watch what happens when I select another range over here. If you want to do non-adjacent ranges, just hold the control key down while you click and drag, which I'm holding the control key down right now. And I have another range, and this cell is now gray, and the white cell has moved over here. I'm going to do one more. Let's go down here and click and drag. And again, the last place that I clicked on a cell was right here, so that's the one that's white. So before you can format data in Excel, you have to select it, and that's the way you select data. I'm going to click off of the selection, and it all goes away. Uh, there are some other shapes down here, and one of them is a little black skinny plus sign and this only shows up when you're in the lower right hand corner of a selection now i've just got one cell selected here the selection is the green bordered area and if i get the fill handle it's called the fill handle because if i click and drag when i get the fill handle i can get that value to fill in all the way down a bunch of twos isn't all that useful i'm going to undo that uh, by the way this also works going to the right you can click and drag to the right and it will give you a bunch of twos all the way across and again that's not very useful what is useful is uh, if you select both of those cells and get your fill handle and click and drag all the way down and now it increments by one all the way down and the reason it does that is because the difference between the first two numbers that we started with here was one so it assumes that i want to keep on adding one all the way down and excel doesn't really care where you start uh, I can start at 100 and I can add 10 on in the next cell. And again, if I just select the 110, I'm just going to get a bunch of 110s all the way down, which is not very useful. Uh, so let's select both of them. Uh, the increment value is 10. So now if I click and drag, it's going to increment by 10s all the way down. Um, and it'll also do that uh, with fractions. Let's do 0.5, let's do 1, and the difference between those is 1 half. And if I click and drag, uh, I get a bunch of numbers that are incremented by 0.5. The other shape that you get down here is the uh, four-headed arrow. And this is pretty much a universal symbol for uh, being able to drag and drop something. So if I want to take what I have selected right here, and it doesn't matter where I go, any place around the selection, I'll get a four-headed arrow, except, of course, down here where I get the fill handle. So um, get the four-headed arrow, click and drag, and you can move that selection any place you want to on the spreadsheet. Okay, let's get out of the data area down here, and let's go up and take a look at our column headings. And as I move across the column headings here through the letters of the alphabet, you'll see I get a fat black arrow pointing down. And the fat black arrow means I can select the entire column. If I want to select multiple columns that are adjacent, I just click and drag. Notice that the cursor changes into a plus sign when I do that. Uh, if I want to do non-adjacent, I do the same thing uh, that I do any place else in Windows. Hold the Control key down while you make the second selection. If I want to widen a column, all I do is get the two-headed arrow here and click and drag. And notice that all of the selected columns uh, became wider. Uh, if you just have one column selected and you get your fat or your two-headed arrow and you click and drag, uh, that column gets widened. I'm going to undo that. Uh, but if you have multiple multiple columns selected, you can make them all the same width at the same time uh, simply by selecting all of them and uh, then adjusting the width of one. And they will all change to the same width. Now let's undo that one as well. And now we're back to our originals. Uh, you can also do the same thing over here on the side. Uh, you get a fat black arrow pointing to the right. If you want more than one, just click and drag. If you want more than one non-adjacent, uh, hold the control key down and click and drag. Uh, and you can also make a row taller. If you get the two-headed arrow at the bottom of the row, I'm going to make row four really tall. And then I'm going to undo it to get it back to where it was before. We also have something up here. 
And if I pause the mouse in the right spot there, you'll see the words formula bar up here. This is my formula bar. And it just shows you the contents of any cell, which doesn't necessarily have to be a formula. In this case, I don't have any formulas, but I do have some numbers in my cells. And whatever cell I click on, uh, the contents of that cell is going to appear up here in the formula bar. Uh, we've got a couple of other buttons here that uh, the X and the check sign aren't really very useful. They just duplicate things you can do on the keyboard, which is easier. Uh, and the little FX uh, is for inserting a function, and that one is useful, and we'll talk about that in a future video. Also, over here, I've got something called uh, the name box. If I move the, the arrow out of the way here, you can see it's called the name box. And this comes in handy. Uh, we'll have a video on this later on, too, uh, when you want to name a range of cells. So right now, each individual cell has its own name. You know, this is uh, column E, row 2, uh, E3, E4, and so on. But I could select a whole bunch of these and give them one name, and sometimes that's a useful thing to do as well. If I move up here uh, above the name box and the formula bar, uh, I'm on what Microsoft calls the ribbon. Uh, the ribbon has a bunch of tabs up here, and when you click on a tab, the contents of the ribbon changes. There is a draw tab on mine because I'm doing this from a computer with a touch screen and so it provides the draw tools for you. We're not going to pay much attention to that. Uh, we've got a page layout tab, formulas, data, review, view. Uh, there's a developer tab which is probably not visible on yours. You have to explicitly turn that on. And then we've got help and team and search over here if you want to search for some help. Uh, just type in here next to the magnifying glass and type in whatever it is that you want to do. So that takes care of most of the basic cursor shapes for Excel. And uh, we'll look at some more interesting stuff in the next video.